Welcome back to PSL Living. I'm Christina Seeberger, and joining me is David Lynch from the Humane Society and our very special guest, Gizmo. <laughs> She is just an absolute adorable little Yorkie. You want to come and say hello? Do you want to come and look? <gasps> look at that face. A little star of the show. Well, welcome, David. Tell Thanks me, for having us. Tell me, tell me about this beautiful little thing right here. Well, Gizmo, as you said, is, is just extremely adorable. Came in with a, came in with a companion, a sister. Um, the sister has recently gotten adopted, which is great news. Um, so we're hoping to shine a light on Gizmo and find her a home, you know, really, really soon. She also came in with an older pet named Annie, who's a doll too. She knows sit, um, housebroken, everything. Really, she's like a wheat and terrier type. Um, so this is this is the first time they've probably been away from from any any humans any friends even from each other really so it's kind of heartbreaking at the same time and the way that they came in was that their owner passed away sadly oh how sad um, so. unexpected and but uh you know they're they're doing well in the shelter but we're hoping to get them out and get them into a good home now, so Gizmo is a little girl yes and and how old how old is she um, do we know she's seven months old and she has a lot of playful energy. You could you could tell right now she's not too sure about it's a new environment for her. So sure. she but you could you could see the flashes of, of her true personality where she just wants to play and and the entire car ride over here she just wanted to be in it was, she's about to jump in my lap right yeah, now. Yeah, she's a, she's an absolute little lovey doll. Look at her. She just wants all that attention. So um, what type of home would be good for her? I, I, anyone really. I, even even with small children, I think this is a, a great age for uh, for uh, you know where a dog can can be used to like you know sometimes little little kids can be a little rough with pets i think this that would be okay with at her age and her energy level um you know i don't know if she was exposed to kids before but <laughs> <laughs> she just wants that attention but, but uh you know i think that that would be a, a good home since she was exposed to other dogs before and she gets along with them any anyone with lots of dogs would be good and uh even even for like a senior companion, this would make an excellent lap dog where you could just, you know, sit and watch TV all day and, and pet Gizmo. And she absolutely loves that. But look, we want you to turn around so people can see that beautiful little face of yours. <laughs> you have just got the cutest little face ever. Um, so she's a purebred Yorkie, and, and yes. does she have any special diet restrictions? Because, you know, I know sometimes Yorkies are very specific with what they can eat and what they can do. Do we know anything about her and her diet? No, well, right now, uh, we didn't get, we got very little information from the family members who, who, turned, who turned them in. But um, we feed pedigree, just basic dog food at the shelter, and we haven't known any, you know, any medical reaction to it or, or an allergic reaction whatsoever but usually a you know a, a grain-free diet's always good for their coat and then uh, you know I always recommend recommend grain-free or any anything with the if you look on the dog food bag anything where it's just, it says like a meat product first or a natural um, mm -hmm. you know substance first rather than just a filler is always like the recommended uh, food dog food to feed your your pets Great. So she has not been neutered yet, correct? So not yet. Not yet. She will be upon um, getting adopted, and she's going through. She's already had her, uh, two boosters, so she's good to go, and her rabies. So she just needs a microchip and to get spayed, and then she's she's good to go. And then she needs a loving home, someone <laughs> who's going to pay lots and lots of attention to her because she absolutely loves that. Um, so so tell us tell us about you know the humane society you know what type of dogs and cats do you have now how many animals do you have in house and you know what can we tell our residents you know about the organization and that we can help bring them to you guys so that you know Gizmo and all of her friends get adopted we are the humane society of San Lucie County is the local humane society in in our area um, First thing I always tell everybody is, you know, each humane society in, in every community is different. They're all independent. None of us receive any funds from the National Humane Society. They're more of like a lobbying mm -hmm. um, advocacy group, and they do a lot of humane investigations. Where the local humane societies are shelters, adoption clinics, and, and then adoption centers, and a lot of them have spay and neuter clinics. So when you see like the Treasure Coast Humane Society in Martin County, um, Veer Indian River Humane Society in St. Lucie, we're all we're all separate. We all serve our um, our specific uh, regions and each 
each year we take in over 5,000 homeless pets. Wow, that's, um, a, that's, a, that's it, a big number. It is a lot. It is shocking. And um, the good news is, is that, you know, that was from a high of 8,000 in 2011. So um, we've seen a steady decline. Sadly, this is going to be the first year that we have seen an increase in the amount mm -hmm. of animals that we've, we've taken in. Um, there's no, really no rhyme or reason to uh, of why we're, we're seeing that because usually, you know, we've seen a steady, uh, you know, a steady improvement in our economy. So I don't know if it's the population boom that keeps coming into Port St. Lucie, but uh, we're going to we're going to try to be reactive and increase our spay and neuter clinic more. So we're going to try to double the output there. I think that'll see a big uh, decrease in the number of animals we take in. We're going to do more targeted spay and neuters for low-income residents in this community. Excellent. And uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, the good news is we're adopting out more and more pets every year. So last Great. year we just we hit 2,000 on on the number. Wow. That was the highest number we've ever had in 60 years of existence. And uh, this year we're about 180 adoptions ahead of that pace so that's great that's great you know we're sort of in the height of the hurricane season and mm -hmm. so is there any advice that we can um, give to our residents on how they can prepare or care for their pets you know in, yeah, in times absolutely. of any type of an emergency you know every just like you have a hurricane preparedness kit for you and your family get one for your pet you're going to want to have a week's worth of dog food um, same thing, water uh, for cats. You're gonna want, you know, make sure you have enough litter supplies, all of that good stuff. Make sure that you have the records from your vet on hand, so that there's a in case you have to board your pet or go, or if there's an evacuation, um, you can prove that they're they're up to date on their rabies, vaccinations, and uh, you know, I always tell people to get to get their pet. <laughs> hey, <laughs> just getting kisses. <laughs> to get their pet microchipped. Um, it's always the uh, I think. With a pet that's not shipped, when it enters a shelter, a dog has a 25% chance of being returned to its owner, a cat only 2%. Wow. When you microchip them, cats go up to 25%, dogs, it's it's a 50% improvement. So That's, that's amazing. So uh, that's always key because who knows what will happen during a storm. Um, pets can go missing and get scared they can run off. If there's a lot of devastation, you're going to have a lot of stray pets running around. So getting your pet microchipped is important. And if they're already chipped, make sure that that information is up to date. So make sure your phone number is correct, your address is correct, because if any of that information is wrong, it's, right. it's useless. Right, you're not going to get it back. Yeah. Sure, it's like an emergency contact for the emergency contact. Exactly, right. <laughs> so, so, you know, just make sure that you have a, a you know, a preparation kit. I know that we haven't, you know, thank, thankfully had a, had a major storm in quite a while right, in this area. Right. I mean, I'm guilty of kind of procrastinating on that as well, thinking that we're we're safe, that it's not going to happen again. But you know, if you're a Floridian, you know that you know any hurricane season, any we're time. we're in the I'm sure it can happen. We're in the danger zone, so just make sure that you're prepared for that. Um, if you need to, a list of pet-friendly hotels or boarding Even facilities, pet-friendly pet shelters, make yes. sure that you check to see you know where they are, and so you're aware. So it's not like a last-moment decision. Yeah. So people with pets should absolutely you know, especially if they're in the evacuation zone, know where there are well, shelters that are pet-friendly. And we have a list of that on our website at hsslc.org, and we also, if there's enough time to prepare, we actually reach out to our fosters to try to. Um, take the shelter animals mm -hmm. into into homes during the storm and then uh, the Newport St. Lucie facility can I've been told it can sustain the winds up to 220 miles an hour so that would be kind of like the uh, resource center for if if uh, you know people had to board their pets and evacuate we would make room and then have the you know the pets be boarded at a facility Awesome, great. Any special programs coming up between now and the end of the year? We have an adoption special going on right now. It's kind of the back to school adopt a study buddy. Um, we're going to do I thirty dollars. Like yeah, we're <laughs> adopt a study buddy. I don't know if this would be a study buddy. This would be a lovey lovey buddy. <laughs> It'd be a welcome distraction. That's what yeah. it would be from homework. Um, exactly. So we're going to do dogs four months and older thirty dollars, and cats and kittens are five dollars, and that's going to run through the end of August. We're always doing adoption specials at least once a month. Um, this coming December, we're going to be we're going to be doing five dollar cats and kittens again, and twenty five dollar dogs. I mean, last year we did that. We had two hundred eighty two adoptions, which was like a record month for us. Um, so we want to end the year strong, and uh, we also have a big event coming up October 29th, our second annual Pup for Paws golf tournament at St. Lucie Trail.
You can right. find more information on that about our website. Get a team together. Uh, if you can't, if you're not a golfer, we always accept donations. Sure. Uh, it's going to help fund our spay and neuter clinic, and then we have a wonderful partnership that we're expanding with Fort Pierce Magnet School this year. Where last year uh, they kind of took like their honor roll students, and we brought like a pet of the month to them, and they actually had a hundred six, a hundred percent success rate. Um, they made a video. They shared it with their friends, and really, a lot of the and a lot of teachers um, ended up adopting. So that was wow. tremendous. But uh, we noticed that when we brought um, pets to the school, a lot of the kids who were, you know, getting into trouble or acting out really gravitated towards the pet and wanted their attention. So this year, we're kind of expanding it to partner a pet with. Um, with a kid who's maybe like at risk or having trouble with uh, behave, mm -hmm. behavioral issues and we're really going to try to like instill a passion for them and, and animal care, uh, you know, part of our humane education program and we're hoping that, uh, you know, we can kind of, kind of help out in our community more. So it's kind of a pilot project that we'll hope if it's successful we'll expand to schools all around the county, so. Great. Amazing. Awesome. Well, Gizmo, I hope you find a home real soon because you are just so cute. Someone is going to grab you up for sure. David, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having um, us. You know, we look to, forward to having you back again. Tell us the, the phone number and the website one more time so if anyone Our, wants to, you know, find out some more information about Gizmo or any of yeah. the other animals. The website is hsslc.org and our phone number is 772-461-0687. Great, thank you. Well, I hope you get adopted very soon. You're such a cutie. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be right back after these messages.